The Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. Careful what you wish for, Giles. Miami Heat fans wanted the Boston Celtics, and the Boston Celtics is what they got. And tonight, the Boston Celtics closed out the Miami Heat 118-84, Game 5. Celtics win the series 4-1. Tom Giles, post-game pod. Yeah. How you feeling about the Celtics team? Never mind how I'm feeling because I felt I felt good. I felt good going into it. I, I felt like they're going to take care of business. I, I, I was always there. How are you yeah, feeling? Yeah, I know. Because like I know pre- this became a thing that I was maybe a little bit pessimistic about the Celtics closing out games. It's as if they had been four and seven on their home court <laughs> in their last eleven home games. That they had struggled to put teams away over the last oh two and a half postseasons. I guess that, that's not fair to say this year, but the past two postseasons for sure. Fair. So I I did need to see it. And it did make me feel better. Both the response from just, I, I don't know what happened in game two. I told you, I think they were just trying to get Mike Gorman an extra home game. We'll talk about Mike coming up later. But I do believe that their response really throughout the season has been very good. And I really like what I saw in this series. We can give the Heat every excuse in the world, even though no one's going to give the Celtics any excuses for not having Jason Tatum at full health in game seven last year. But the Celtics played fantastic throughout the series I, I, I still haven't looked it up since, since post game I believe wire to wire they certainly you said what 27 point yeah it was like 27 plus that they led by in all four wins and they took all the potential drama out of this one in the first few minutes and just asserted once again they're the better team and if you ever chant we want Boston again this is what could happen oh, you could get them you could get them I, it was just like right out of the shoot tonight you saw Jalen Brown being aggressive then you know the Celtics I think started like one of six from three and then made seven in a row and then so it was just like you blinked and it was 41 to 23 right they put up 41 points in the first quarter which I mean throughout this series Miami had done everything it could to just slow things down and uh, they just they, they ran out of answers and I think part of it too was that they were trying to play fast and they're trying to hit threes on, uh, of their sure. own because they realized that they're not going to beat the Celtics 90 to 87 because they're not gonna be able to hold them 87 points instead um the Celtics just devoured, devoured on that Miami defense in that first quarter. And, uh, yeah, it was never close from there. Caleb Martin used up all his voodoo magic in game two. The, the Heat just had no other, like, Eric Spolster couldn't drum up anything else that was going to work. Their attempts to junk up this series, Celtics kept their heads throughout. And it was just clear there was a huge talent disparity here. There was, but you know what? There were also hustle plays, I thought, in game five. That really set the tone. You had. I'm so glad you keep bringing this play up because it was my favorite play of the Drew night. Drew Holiday in the corner. Um, it was on the Celtic side of the floor, so yep. they had the ball. But Drew Holiday in the corner, saving the ball and just basically flinging it up in the air, 50-50 ball, and Jalen Brown goes up between two Heat players and brings it down. Oh, I mean, and that, that was that was awesome. And then there was the Al Horford Horton, hustle play where, where he, like, on the offensive rebound, exalted. and he goes over to the bench, yes. and he starts like – <laughs> I, it was, I, I couldn't see because his back was to us, but I'm sure he said something to uh, the effect of, uh, this is ours tonight. <laughs> We're not going back to Miami. It was something like that. But like those little hustle plays, I thought, really set the tone and let you know how they felt about this game going into I it. I think his son, Ian, was right behind the bench, too. And oh, he, yeah. And he was likewise, like, ah, which was pretty awesome. So uh, I do love that that's sort of – that's what you have to differentiate this team, is, at least while Porzingis is out, right? Like – you have to have the hustle plays. You've got to play with more energy, more grit. And that Jalen play in a nutshell to me was, was great. There's a superstar player who could very easily have been just like, hey, take it. Yep. Instead, he goes up into the fray like a cornerback or a wide receiver in, in an end zone play and finds a way to get that ball. And you can just tell from there the Heat were just, there's no chance. I also love Celtics throughout this series have sort of come in with a very simple game plan attack mismatches sometimes they get caught up in it yep. game two slowed down way too much but i mean every time someone saw 14 tyler hero it was like that's where the ball's going that's what they're going to attack and tyler hero had no answer except for going like 0 for 8 to start the game uh, he was uh, he was brutal and they, they went after him quite a bit as, as you said but also go to the third quarter too i think the heat maybe at one point got it to 19 like they got it inside 20 i think i think right but that's like one of that that was the quarter yep. that kind of was was trouble for them Last year, the last few years against Miami, mm-hmm. and not only did they kind of weather that storm, they just they, they kept their foot on the accelerator to the point where it was, I think Al Horford came, came out with like four minutes left in the third quarter, and we didn't see him again. And it, you, you kind of wondered, how much, how much of the starters are we going to see in the fourth? I mean, Jason Tatum was out there for like a minute, I think, but that was about it, and then it was 
all about the stay ready group. If Peyton Pritchard could have made shots, they would have won by 50. But, you know, someone had to have an off night. And yeah. so nice of him to take it easy on the heat. Save some of those bullets for the next round. Uh, what does it say about the Celtics that Jason Tatum can take nine shots, still put up a double-double, and still Celtics dominate a game where they don't have Kristaps Porzingis? It says that uh, everyone else can step up, and that they've, they've got a balanced attack that's going to be very difficult for anyone to defend. And I think Derek White also, what did he have in the first? Did he have 15 points in the first quarter? Yeah, 15, I think 16, he had 15 right? in the first quarter. And it's just <laughs> considering what he did in the last game, mm-hmm. scoring 38, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you might want to guard that guy. I it's just such a luxury to have. Don't give the game plan away for the I, next round. But to have a guy like Derek White coming around a screen on the wing and knocking down a three from like 26 feet. Mm. You know what I mean? That is such a luxury that other teams just don't have. But that's that's where this team was tonight. I'm kind of done with the heat. Are you done with the heat? I've been done with the heat. <laughs> I've been done with the heat. I've been saying it like Jason Tatum has been done with the heat. Celtics were done with the heat. So sick of that team. Like I, so, And you could sense it from the player side. It's, it's funny. I was just doing BST and they're like, do you think there was actual animosity between – those two teams. I said, when you see someone as many times as they have over the past half decade, you are sick of playing them. And and I do think they exercise some demons and just now it feels a little bit like 22 to me, like where they had to go through the nets. Everyone was like, oh no, the nets, the nets. And it was like, no, you just steamroll them and now you have all the momentum going forward and you feel good about yourself. And they had to grind from there. But now I feel like the Celtics are really set up. So, let's spin it forward. Okay. Who do you want? Any preference? Like, if you is there one it's, team between the Cavaliers and the Magic that makes you say, ah, so I, I, I think the Cavaliers are the more dangerous team because Donovan Mitchell has played so well in Boston, and so they do a, a bona fide superstar mm-hmm. who, you know, that, that's something to keep in mind. And they've got bigs who can defend. We saw Evan Mobley come up with a really clutch play at the end of the game, and Darius Garland who can who can shoot lights out. They, they've got a good team. And Max Struess as well, who, mm. yeah, that, that's another guy you would have to see again. On the other side, the Orlando's just – kind of physical and annoying you know what I mean like they they're not like the heat but they just have a physical presence that could be a bit of a nuisance mm-hmm. you know Apollo Bancaro's I mean seeing him come out and have the performance he did uh and that that loss to sure. Cleveland that last game uh lets you know that he's he's ready you know he's doesn't look like a you know still the guy's only been in the league for a couple of years he looks like someone who's ready to go and then like Mo Wagner, I mean, you brought this up too. Like, I mean, there's revenge games all over the place here. That that worry me. I can't I can't decide which team I'd actually want to see, but you know, if, if obviously if it goes seven games, mm-hmm. it's better for the Celtics because it means that these two teams will beat up on each other even more. Yeah, so I I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. I think from a Magic perspective, I don't know how they score enough points to hang with the Celtics. And now I said that at, the Cavaliers were probably thinking that too at the start of that series, and they kind of at home played better and willed themselves back into that series. I just think the Celtics have so much more options in terms of switchability and ways to make them have to work. Even with Donovan Mitchell on the Cavs side, like I feel like the Celtics have matchups that can at least make him work, but there's always that per- possibility of a 50-point night, a 40-point game. The- Max Strews is still the one that's going to drive like Celtics fans nuts oh, if that comes sure. to fruition yep. because every time they play them during the regular season, it comes up. He just seems to have a little extra motivation. And I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to brace myself for that. Yeah. Um, I, I if if you're gonna be selfish about it, because mm-hmm. you know, like, it wouldn't stop Scal from choosing a uh, an opponent based on destination. You know, if you were to say Ooh. travel in the second round, Chris, uh, is there a city you'd rather go to between Orlando and Cleveland, or are we like to the point where it's like I you can't you can't be making selfish choices in the second round of the playoffs? Well, so Only some, the first. Some of our bosses who potentially might be with an air shot denied yeah. me the ability to go to Miami. Uh, yeah. This past round, understandably so. I had a great time in studio with you. Thank you. Uh, I, I I always err on the side of Florida. I like warm weather. I actually am a big Cleveland guy. Barrio, the taco joint. Cameraman Barry Alley over here could maybe. No, he's giving a shrug. Maybe. There. I I can't. I, I haven't spent really any time in Cleveland, so I can't. Well, say. so I I'm going to Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in October. Oh, nice. So uh, Dave Matthews Band is getting in. Oh, okay. I must be, it must be a full circle moment for my life, and uh, I will be up there for that. But uh, are you, are you going to be able to get into the VIP section with Drew Carter, or is that <laughs> just like the the elevator situation earlier this year? I hate that Drew Carter has become the uh, sort of he's a, such a huge Dave Matthews yeah, fan. Yeah, I know. Fan. He's like, hey, like, he's, who he's, am I he's, taking my photo <laughs> with? <laughs> yeah, he's heard of them. What a jerk. Yeah. Um, we're not here to talk about Drew Carter. 
Um, I am here to talk about, it's a good segue though, I'm here to talk about my, my Gorman. Um, but, like, let's get to the really important part of tonight's game. Yeah. And we'll wrap on this. What, like, what, what, how cool was that moment? Let's start, I, I can't even put it into words. So, I mean, I, I was trying to figure out at what point in the fourth, because we were in the media section, but I was like, I, I want to go up there and I want to listen to the rest of the game. Mm. I want to be able to hear what's going on with the rest of the game. And, um, yeah, so that final, and I didn't realize it was Joe Mazzullo who called the timeout yeah. with, with a minute to go. And so then they, you know, um, had well, Mike on camera and then, Eddie Palladino letting everyone know that uh, this was Mike Gorman's final game and having the the tributes and they had new tribute video I believe up there too it was that was an awesome moment because the applause went on and as rightfully so like for minutes it's funny because I was loading up my phone so I could try to listen to the Mike's last send off and then I heard time out and I actually got mad I was like what are we doing why is there a time out right and then I was like oh this was planned this is actually a really it's like cool they thing. knew what they were doing it's like the Celtics actually planned an amazing moment and the, I think honestly the best part of it not only did we get three minutes or three and a half minutes or whatever to celebrate Mike but he gets a standing ovation everyone acknowledges him gives him that final send-off on like the perfect moment as you wrap up against a rival and then Gino rolls yes which is like symbolic of all the success of the peak of the success during Mike's whole tenure here, and I know you could say the 80s, but like really, you know, weathering the 90s, the early 2000s, and getting to that 17th banner, just was, it, I mean, it really hit me. I was like, wow. Yeah, and, and he had, uh, you know, the perfect send off. Um, it, it was it was great, and it was great that, you know, it was a Celtics win, and it happened at the Garden, which again, Chris's theory is that game two was a scripted loss to make sure that Mike saw, Gorman's final I, game I was the at the Garden. Yeah. So, I get it. it makes, it's grown on me, I'll tell you that. See, see there's, there's always a way to explain away a, a bad loss, and what better way? Uh, as I told you on the post-game show, uh, there's one final step for the Celtics to make sure this Gorman send-off is completed the right way. That's to win a title. For sure. So, four wins is nice. Eight wins will be great. Twelve is good, too. I need 16. 16. That's right. Four down, 12 to go. 12 to go. <laughs> get, get right to it's it. Get right to it next week. The series felt like it was three months for five games. I, like, am I crazy? Like, it did not feel like a quick series. It kind of stretched on a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I need this upcoming. It should be every other day, depending on when we start. And I'm ready for that. It just it was it was too much Miami. You know, that, that's all it was. It was like that's where you ended last year on a series that went seven games and didn't obviously didn't end well. Same thing the year before. It was yeah. It's it's four out of five years. Dealing with Miami, so that's the first playoff series. Dealing with Miami. You no, know we don't have to talk about it anymore. Miami Heat. Miami Heat. We, nice. We, we might. There might be a little yeah. bit more on the rest of our post-game pod. Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group with over 2,600 vehicles in stock. The brands you love, backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24AutoGroup.com. Jalen, congratulations. First game of this postseason without Chris Chops Porzingis. What did you like best about the way you guys closed this thing out? Uh, we came in, we threw the first punch, so we played fast, we played aggressive, um, and we found a way to get a win. You know what I mean? That was the best. I got it. After game three, you told me this group still trying to get a feel for how, who you want to be in the postseason. Do you feel like you guys are starting to find that? Yes, yeah, we just take it one game at a time. You know, we just got to keep staying with it. We got to clean up some of the stuff that we've been uh, messing up on, and we're going to keep getting better as the playoffs go on. Do you allow yourself to celebrate this at all? I mean, tonight, I think it's always great to advance, um, but tomorrow we get ready for whoever's next. Speaking of tonight, this was the last call for the legend, Mike Gorman. When you were drafted here, did you know about Mike and Tommy, and what has it meant to have them calling your game? Your it's career. been great. It's been an honor, you know, and I hope Mike enjoys his retirement. Jalen, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, again, Jalen Brown with a huge night tonight as well. Coming out 25 points for JB in this one. can hear you. I'm not going to lie. They're so loud. This crowd is so hype. Hey, what we do? Let's go. Let's go. Moving forward. Let's have, make it happen. Let's go. Steady. Well, they're pumped because you got the Celtics moving on, and we talked about this before the game. You know, would they be able to close it out? You know, what was it going to look like here in game five? Chris Forsberg 
brought it up. They've, they've had their struggles in these moments before. Nice. Not an issue tonight. Um, yeah, well, I, I think the difference is you learn. You know, you learn from your mistakes. And last year, this was a team that where you say, hey, they constantly let go of the rope. Yeah. They had an opportunity to close something out. They didn't make it happen. This year, we haven't seen that that many times. And whenever we did see it, they were able to correct it, right? And they went right back into their bag and was able to get these Ws. So, I mean, it, it's no better way to win because who was the one that put you guys out last year? It was Miami Heat. Who did you put out this year? Yeah, Miami Heat. So that's, that's sweet revenge. Yes, it is. Yeah, Nothing wrong with an easy win, 118-84. Again, they're winning by 34. Uh, awesome moment at the end of the game. Awesome moment, that final commercial break when, you know, they put Mike up on the Jumbotron. Uh, I, I, I thought that was perfect. I thought it really encapsulated in the crowd. For yeah, sure. Yeah, that was, that was just great. I mean, 43 years, Tom, you only got, what, like 41 to go before you're at that level. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, I mean, Mike's an amazing Everybody that knows Mike knows that he's an amazing guy. He's, he's nice. He's, he's worked with so many great people. Everyone here that has watched the Celtics have listened to Mike Gorman. An amazing tribute. You know, like, you think about the, the last game of the season, all the things that went into that, like that moment, right? Right there just kind of like ends it but the thing is Mike's not going anywhere he's going to be sitting courtside we're going to be up here fighting for media seats and my man's going to be chilling with the owners in courtside with so, popcorn uh, yeah, and like, a cocktail he'll be at the ninth level we'll be over here fighting down <laughs> here to in get the building seat. just in the building that's all you need yeah. and, Mike, and Mike will be chilling eating popcorn so it's not like we're not going to see him it's just a uh, great way to end and, and hopefully like like this is a magical season for us for sure what about tonight's yes, game yes, did you smack kinda... down man we got smack down ah, ah. but at one moment did you know this is going to be this is going to be the smackdown that we saw you know what when to be honest with you when luke cornett came in and bam out of bayou struggled for like the three minutes and i'm like oh and then Al Horford came back. That run right there, it was 26 to 5. At that point, I thought that thing was over. Well, I, I like the play where Drew Holiday saved it. Jalen Brown goes up and gets his 50 50 oh, balls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That right there, then we end up getting a bucket out of that. Yep. So when I looked at that, I said, we're winning the 50 50 balls. We're knocking down threes. We're playing defense. Miami Heat doesn't have a chance tonight. We're, we're different than last year. You oh, know, like different. That, that one, that game two is an anomaly. But, That's it. But we get after it, man. Like, even late in the game, Drew Holiday was hawking the ball. He got a foul. He was, like, into it. We're so different than we were last year. It's still, you know, it's a still journey. It's tough. You get To win, it's hard. But we're just a different team right now. Well, it's also, too, I mean, the closeout mentality. Let's get it. The closeout mentality tonight as well. You know, it's, it's, you're looking at 22 at halftime. You wonder, is Miami going to make a little bit of run here to start the second half? And instead, you just saw the starters, everyone just take it to another level and build that thing back out. Yeah, I mean, we picked on matchups all night that we had him. We moved the basketball. I think Who was they it. picking on? Tyler Hero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've been telling y'all, man. I, I know the man gets buckets and he has his moments, but I, I don't know, man. You, you, you're not going to say nothing, but he don't seem like Miami Heat to me. The only thing he seems like to me is like he just likes to chill. Like, like I get it. He works hard, but you ain't going to win with him, That's man. not Come the, on. You don't think he's heat culture? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> he, he, name a guy in the, in the past that just gets destroyed defensively. Just gets like, – can't stop anybody. Don't happen. No. You can go look at the history of the Miami Heat. They don't got guys like that. He's the one guy. I'm telling you, man, that's got to be Pat Riley's grandson. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> they, had 50, they had 50 points in there, like 19 shots. He came back into the fourth quarter. I was like, what are they doing? I'm telling it's you, like man. It's like a 32-point game. Hey, I'm telling you, I've seen this before. It's like he's trying to get him a scholarship in the AAU circuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's send it back downstairs. Abby standing by with head coach Joe Mazzula. Why am I Joe, before the game, you told us your team would have to match the Heat's desperation. Do you feel like you guys did that? What stood out to you about the way your team closed uh, us out? Consistency. Uh, I thought we got off to a good start, and uh, we were consistent throughout the entire game, which is really hard to do against a team like that. Uh, really hard to do when you know, you're know you up 20 to 25 points. And, and something that I think this team has done throughout the entire year is they just play with a high level of consistency, high level of focus, high level of physicality. What do you take away from this series? 
Uh, I mean, every series takes on a life of its own. Every series has different themes. And, um, you know, I think the one theme, regardless of who you're playing, is physicality and rebounding. Uh, and then the open-mindedness to adjust. And I thought we, we won games in different ways, um, you know, because of Miami's creativity on how to change the game and uh, how to, you know, play different ways. So uh, we, those are our constants. And then we got to stay open-minded to, you know, different matchups, uh, call for different stuff. What was your intention calling timeout with 41 seconds left? That was the media timeout. That was the media timeout. So it was, it was not to honor Mike Gorman one more time because uh, that no. worked out pretty well yeah. for us. Yeah. No, it was a media timeout. Growing up in this town, what has it meant to have worked with Mike and now send him off in retirement? Yeah. Um, you know, to be able to do the interviews with him the last few games, uh, to be able to shake his hand after the game, and uh, just a guy growing up, you know, you hear his voice, and uh, Dad always talked about him, and, um, you know, it's just an honor to kind of share the microphone with him. And, you did have 17 points tonight. Playoff career high for you. I mean, how much does it help playing here at the Garden, having you can hear we, we got the crowd still behind us as well, but having the crowd out there and how much does that kind of you feed off that energy? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to be at home in front of these fans of the best in the league, and you know when when they're going, it gets us going, and you know it's 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 fun to feed off that, and and it's really fun when things are going your way and they're just behind you the whole game, and um, you know it's, it was great tonight. Jalen, what did it mean to close this series out, especially over this team that beat you guys a year ago? Um, no, it feels great, man. Uh, it feels it feels good. I think that we we came out, we executed, you know, every you know, we played well and we advanced. So now we focus on what's next. This is the you know first game without Chris Stapps. Just your reaction that you know his injury and how you guys move forward off that and continue to do so in the next round. Uh, next guy mentality. I think you know um, we look to play a little faster. Um, we look to increase the pace and you know getting some familiarity with night tonight was like a. Um, advantage. I mean, uh, a view of like how we want to play, you know, without KP on the floor. But um, I think we got a lot of room for growth. I, I still think that we could play a lot better. Personally, I feel like I could play a lot better, and uh, I'm looking forward to the to the next round. Joe said a few times that this series was a test of your physicality. Um, how did you guys handle that, and, and what did the Heat do to kind of test you in that regard? Um, they do a little bit of everything, physically, mentally. They try to mess with you, make you hesitate, make you think, and it's just um, they're good at that. You know, and give credit to the, the coaching staff over there. And they, they did a bunch of different things. They put, you know, um, hair on me. Like they, they try to double at the rim late. You know, they make you want to hesitate. They play a the little zone. They do a little bit of everything. So it's, it's a combination of physically and mentally, just graduating. And I feel like we. Uh, um, I feel like we executed down the stretch, and now we're advancing to the next round. You said a bench. Is there anything extra going through Miami? You know, after the you know you guys have a kind of a rivalry going. Um, is it just a, a, any sort of extra satisfaction of like taking care of that team in this series? Uh, I think it's 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 all business. You know, just keep it professional. You know, it is a lot of history between back and forth, but, you know, uh, it didn't matter who it was. We just had to get the job done. Jalen, looking back at how it ended last year, right, you owned your struggles, but this year you came out so aggressive. Just what led into that? Just, that mindset? just mentally, you know, work, trusting the work, um, just coming out, you know, owning it. Obviously, last year, uh, probably had one of my worst series in the playoffs just in general. And that just has carried on from there. Um, but, you know, facing them in the first round this year, I still think I could have played a lot better, you know, a lot more relaxed, maybe put a little bit more attention on myself than I needed to. But, you know, still we came out and was able to find um, ways to be aggressive and help my team win. So, um, mashallah, is full circle. Um, now we're just looking forward to the next. I think it's up for you guys just to win in five here. You're going to have at least a few days of rest going forward. Um, just for the you know the long grind of the playoffs. I think it's good. I think it's good to you know that we did our work early. Um, wish it could have been four, but we'll take five. Uh, mentally reset, you know, and focus on what's next. You know, see what stuff that you could continue to improve on. Definitely some stuff we can clean up. Definitely some stuff I will clean up um, going forward in the playoffs. And you just look forward to the next round. 
Taylor, when you use the word graduate, graduating, like, was this kind of a, a stepping stone, like, from last year to this year, professionalism, how you guys took this series? Is this kind of a, a step forward, like a graduating from last year? A part of it. You know, I think we still have tests to go through um, throughout this playoffs, especially now with KP um, being out. Um, but I think we're up to the challenge. I think, yeah. I, I think I'm up to the challenge, um, and I'm excited about that. So. We're graduating. Um, we haven't graduated yet. Like a <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something like that. You've had some battles against Miami. Um, almost feels like a rite of passage. You have to be. You have to go through them somehow. Was there any extra satisfaction of going through them here and, and definitively taking care of business? Uh, I mean, yes. I think it's like my fourth time and you know, five years playing them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, you know, I was thinking when the play-in game was, you know, they were trying to figure out the standings in the last week or so. I just had it in my mind made up that we was going to play Miami. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to play Miami in the sense that, uh, you know, maybe last year playing against Atlanta, we might have relaxed a little bit. But knowing the history with Atlanta, uh, Miami and how, you know, hard they play and how well coached they are that, uh, you know, for a first round matchup, regardless of the seed that we were going to have to, uh, you know, be ready to play, be ready to fight. When you say you're honest with yourself and teams are thinking that about you, do you think that that they wonder about your toughness? Like, what what, what do you think teams think about you uh, in that regard? No, I think um, the world we live in, it's, it's got to be something wrong with every team. I, that's what they like to say. And, you know, you can see how talented we are. I think it's lazy or easy to say that, you know, teams can out tough us, right? And I never understood that. Like, what's the definition of tough? Like, having the louder guys on your team, like, that, that shit don't make you tough. Uh, you know, everybody has their own definition of what toughness is. It's playing the right way, showing up every day to do your job uh, without complaining. And I think that's being tough. Well, I don't know what to say, really. For the past 45 years, it's been an honor and my distinct pleasure to have been the voice of the Boston Celtics. I'll be forever grateful to this ownership for treating my family as they treat their own. And special thanks to all who welcome Tommy, Scal, and me into your homes all winter long when there was a cold night going on outside. You turned us on, and that just couldn't have been better. There's no place I would rather have been. So Boston, thank you. Good night.